Hey guys, what's up today? We're looking at a tension problem, a, a problem that really has to do with forces and vectors. And we're going to try to find the tension in these ropes or these cables that are attached to this mass right here. So this mass is 5 kilograms. So 5 kilograms right here. And it's being acted on by the force of gravity. So the force due to gravity is going down at negative mg j hat. Right, and then these two tension vectors are what are opposing this force of gravity. So if this thing is still, it's in static equilibrium, then these two added together should balance out this force here. So this plus this should be equal to mg j hat or T1 plus T2 plus Fg should be equal to zero. So we're going to try to find tension 1 and tension 2 in this example. All right, so first thing we write up here, we go like T1, tension 1. That's the force in this rope that is countering the force due to gravity. So that's going to be probably larger than T2 because it's closer to being almost vertical. So if this thing were vertical, all of the tension would be in this rope, and this rope would be useless. It wouldn't be doing anything to hold up the, the mass. Now, if this is larger, we expect its magnitude to be larger when we get done. So tension 1 plus tension 2 plus force due to gravity should be equal to the zero vector. All right, so what we need first is we need tension one and tension two. Well, how can we get those? Well, what we can do first is notice that this angle is also going to be 30 degrees, and this angle is going to be 60 degrees. All right, so tension one is equal to its magnitude multiplied by unit vector in this direction. So what's a unit vector that's 60 degrees but pointing in the negative x direction? Well, negative cosine is 60. And then the y component is sine of 60. So we'll say x positive this way y is positive going up. All right, so that is our tension 1 vector. So what we really don't know is what is this magnitude and tension 1. So this magnitude and tension 1, we're just going to call that T1 without the vector symbol. So we'll do T1 is just the magnitude of the first tension vector. So we multiply this out, we get T1 Cosine of 60 is 1 half, so this is going to be negative 1 half i hat plus t1 square root of 3 over 2 j hat. So that's our tension 1 vector. The magnitude t1 multiplied by negative 1 half i hat, so it's going the negative x direction. And it's got a positive y component, so t2. The second tension vector has an unknown magnitude, magnitude T2, times, this one has a positive x component, so positive cosine of 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees for the y component. So that's the unit vector in this direction. And that, if we let T2 without the vector symbol be the magnitude of T2 vector, is going to be t2 cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 i hat plus t2 times 1 half j hat. All right, so we've got our vectors. Now we want to figure out what are the magnitudes t1 and t2. So if we look at this equation right here, tension 1 plus tension 2 
plus fg, the force due to gravity, that should all be equal to zero. All right, so this equation implies that we have these two components. We add all the x components together for each tension, and then the force. Well, that's just t1 times negative 1 half plus t2 times square root of 3 over 2. And then we add all the y components together from each vector. So each y component, here's the y component right here in each vector. Well, that's showing up in this component for j hat. That's a j hat component right there. Then this sum is equal to the zero component for zero. And then this sum is equal to zero as well. So we get two equations. This equation or this term equals zero and then this term also equals zero. So we get two equations, two unknowns. And here we're gonna let g be 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the mass, we have to recall that that was five. So mg is actually 49. mg is actually 49. So we have two equations, two unknowns, and we can replace this mg now with 49. How can I solve for the two unknowns, the magnitudes of tensions one and tension two? Well, I can actually multiply this first equation by square root of three and add it to the second equation to eliminate the magnitude of t1. So when we do that, this first term goes away. The second term becomes t2 times square root of 3 times square root of 3 over 2. So that's 3 over 2. Add it to this term. So plus t2 times 1 half equals 49. Well, that tells us that 2t2 is equal to 49, so t2 is equal to 49 over 2. 49 over 2. From there, we can solve for t1. So t1 is equal to t2 times square root of 3 from the first equation. So those are the magnitudes of our tension. So this tension then is 49 times square root of 3 over 2. So that's the tension in the first rope or the rope on the left. And the tension in the rope on the right is 49 over 2. And we'll, these are in newtons. So these are newtons, which are kilogram meters per second squared. And that's how we find the tension in a rope or in ropes that have different angles.